So we are looking at the 86 rated Sol Campbell, six foot two, low medium, two star, three star, left feet and right footed, can only play centre back, unbelievably good physical and defending stats there, 82 composure as well, good acceleration and sprint speed because he's lengthy and I'll explain that in a minute, but overall just like a fantastic centre back. Now in terms of play styles, we've got ourselves power header, slide tackle plus, bruiser, block and then we have got ourselves aerial so he's got some good play styles in that sense now we've gone for an anchor i know a lot of people want to use a shadow and i completely understand why but hear me out now we have a look on foot bin so with an anchor he gets a plus four on the pace and plus six on defending now if we keep an eye on a defender when we put it on shadow the only difference is he gets an extra plus four on interceptions and a plus one on slide tackle so I don't think it's worth it. Yes, you could argue the plus four on pace is what you're doing, but I'd rather boost up the strength, aggression, and jump in and subsidize the acceleration and sprint speed because of length fee than waste a shadow that costs 5k and get a plus one on slide tackle and a plus four on interceptions. Doesn't mean it's the wrong choice. It's just, in my personal opinion, I think anchor is the best one to go for. Length fee means they get quicker over time. Now that he's six foot two, with his own high and stocky body type. He's a 91 rated centre back. And he looks absolutely fantastic. Whenever I've played against him, he's been an absolute menace. We are playing in our 4 2 3 1 system today. And our 4 2 3 1 is going to be basically in foot champs, as you can see there. And we're just going to see how we get on with Campbell. Now, I played against him a lot. I've used his loan in a couple online friendly matches, for example, in the cup, etc. And he seems like an absolute menace. So hopefully I can show you today why you should have an anchor on him instead of a shadow. And we're just going to see how we get on in natural gameplay. We're not going to let our opponent run through or anything like that. And that's a pretty good team from our opponent. Let's see if we can get ourselves a win here. So first of all, just want to show you what Campbell looks like on the pitch. You can see here he's quite a big figure. He's okay on the turn. He's got very good composure to pass out of situations, which is always nice. Especially if you build up from the back. It's going to offer you opportunities like that. But that's going to be his job. As you can see, there's our main centre-back sitting back, trying to stop the attack of our opponent like any defender should or would. Look, Campbell coming over, marking that pass in. So Levers had to come over and cover. But wanted to show you an example of dragging players out. That's how quick his recovery is. Yes, again, you could argue the plus four would make a difference. But it generally depends who the striker is in terms of pace and much more. So now that you've seen that, we won't drag him out anymore like that. Unless he comes in a situation like this. Sample coming over. Back. Campbell absolutely eats up. A great tackle on Saka there. That is his job, just to stop that counter-attack. We'll take a throw in. Win that easy header. Good chest even from Campbell. And now we're on our way on a counter-attack. And we get ourselves a goal there. And it all came from Campbell's tackle initially, winning that chest and then counter-attacking. And that's all his job is, is basically to uh, win those attacks, stop the attacks in themselves in that sense, and then get ourselves underway. And you can't ask much more from a centre-back than that role. Well, back to Cam. We're going to drill it straight into Lampard. Just done a review on him, so make sure you check that out if you want to see how good Lampard is. Lovely turn in. Great finesse and even equally better save. We'll take the corner. We'll see if we can stick it on Campbell's head. He's in the middle of the question here. Let's see if we can do this. He's gone out wider than I would have liked. It's not a problem. Saliba's picked up the loose ball. Got Campbell here. For some reason he's chilling in the box. He shouldn't even be here. Can't get the shot off, of course. Now, see his recovery speed. You can see he's yeah, running in the middle of the park. Well, we're taking a 3-1 lead here at the moment. Our opponent hasn't really attacked too much. We shut him down hit him on the counter. So not much to show you with Campbell in this uh, sort of moment. Again, bad pass from our opponent. Let's see if we can capitalise on it. Right over to Campbell, picks the ball up, little touching, I play it back out wide again, just trying to find some space. Campbell with a lovely interception, good control out, driving forward a little bit, don't want to drag him right out, so we're going to play it back in. Lovely switch over, and that's exactly what you need him to do, good interception, using that composure as well. Got ourselves another corner here, let's see if we can put it on to Campbell's head. Campbell here. Lovely header and a lovely goal from Campbell as well. Getting in the right position. Using that aerial and power header play stars he's got to get the goal. What a performance on him so far. All right, Campbell on the ball again. A little pass out. Good pass out wide. Oh, now we've got the attack underway. Campbell is looking for that good interception again. Read the play well. Counter attack underway. Good tackle from our opponent. We're going to drag that here. Campbell's got two to mark. We're going to do a second man press. And some reason our keepers missed it. So sometimes there's things you can't do anything about. Somehow 
The ball went through to the goalkeeper here. Like, what happened? It looks like he's pausing it as well. That's not on me, unfortunately. That's just the game. Again, Campbell in the right position where he needed to be. You're expecting your keeper to come out and grab it, and he just leaves it like it is. But that's the reason why we can see goals. It doesn't matter which defenders you have or which goalkeepers you have. There's some bugs in the game, and you can see there. Campbell's been dragged out. and needs recovery speed. And there we go. Intercepting that pass again. Great movement from him. Even out of position, he can recover for us. Now we've got says another counter-attack. Nowhere to go and a really fantastic tackle from our opponent. That's half-time. So we've conceded two goals. I've only shown you one of them, and that's kind of how the first one was as well. But you can see how Campbell's doing in those roles. Even if you drag him out, his movement on and off the ball is fantastic in terms of where he wants to go. See, our opponent's only had two shots, two goals. It's just been one of those games for him. He's on an 8.2 so far. That's obviously because of his goal. We see a 9 out of 11 dribbles, one shot, one goal. Great passing from him. Now, he's had 100% tackle rate, two interceptions, three out of four of offensive drills won, even 100% defensive, 100% aerials as well. So in the situations where he's supposed to do his job, he's doing it fantastically. In the situations that he can't control, that's how we're conceding. But he's doing exactly what I'd like him to do, and the anchor is coming in really well for us, and he's opening up a lot of space. And let's just see if we can carry on with him in this role in defense. Second half underway. Campbell holding off Nunes there. Lovely defence and a great header back to the goalkeeper. Again, fantastic there, marking the run, using his strength that we've managed to boost up with the anchor and a hold off Nunes into a good attack there, stopping that completely in its tracks and then getting ourselves the ball back to attack. Been caught out here. Campbell's got a bit of work to do. Two-on-one situation. Look at the pace of him coming over. Wins that tackle, wins the ball back. Easy pass. This card is really good. If you need a defender to do that sort of work for you there, he's going to be top of the list. Lovely ball in. So it looks like we got a rage quit. I do think we've seen enough gameplay. We showed you what he was good at, what he's not good at. We have a look at his performances again from those 63 minutes in, champs. You can see that he was just a very, very consistent defender for us. 11 out of 13 dribbles complete. Of course, that one shot. All passes complete as well. And then here it comes. 100% tackle succession. Two interceptions out of two. Two defensive duels, one out of two. One aerial duel out of one. So he had 100% in everything apart from three out of four offensive duels where he was running with the ball. So an absolute rock in the back. Now, if we jump back over to Footbin, you can see that he's coming in at 308,000 coins, which if you did the SBC and got Sol Campbell, that's a huge dub in my opinion. You got yourself one of the best defenders in the game at the moment, and he's going to be in the team for a long time, especially at 86 rated. Now, I still stand by what I said at the start. I think Anchor's definitely better than a shadow. I don't think wasting 5k on a shadow, you're going to notice any difference in what he does and what he can and can't do was an advantage of the four place. Now, Playing him in a position where you don't drag him out is going to be the most efficient. I know that's obvious to say, but I wanted to make sure that you understand that. He can definitely use his strength for that 99 strength and aggression to the advantage of pushing players off the ball all the time. Not only that, every single defensive stats are 90 or higher, which is just ridiculous to say for a 90, or an 86 rated card. Sorry. Slide tackle plus, I don't really like. That's obviously completely manual if you're really bad at time in your slide tackles. You're not going to get the benefit of the playstyle. I never slide tackle because the game's so inconsistent with tackling in itself. You're more likely going to get a red card than you are to win the ball. But the rest of these are fantastic. Bruise is good. Aerial's good for the counters on the corners, as we saw. Block's fantastic for blocking shots automatically. And that's why he becomes a 91-rated centre-back. And an absolute monster in the back. He's an expensive version of Varane, don't get me wrong. But if you've got him and you want to use an icon, it's going to give you chemistry. He's got to be at the top of that list. But as always, if you have any questions about this card or any other card, comment down below. And if you're new to the channel, smash that like button, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.